The very first stars might have appeared when the universe was only 100 million years old, or less than 1% of its current age. Since then, the rapid expansion of space has stretched their light into oblivion, leaving us to seek clues about their existence in cosmic sources closer to home. By analyzing the light emerging from clouds around a distant quasar, researchers from Japan, Australia, and the United States found a distinctive blend of heavy elements could have come from just one source, the colossal supernova of a first-generation star. Friends, look up. When you peer at the heavens on a clear, moonless night, you can see the stars of our galaxy strewn across the black. We cannot help but seek recognizable outlines by tracing our finger from one star to the next, like searching for shapes in clouds. To our eyes, the individual stars making up these constellations seem uniform, remarkable only when forming part of a larger group. But with a powerful enough telescope, the truth reveals itself, and we can finally regroup the sky according to science, not symbolism. So let us take a tour of the stars, in order of their rarity. We begin with the failed stars, brown dwarfs. Below 8% of the mass of the Sun, these are protostars without the gravitational clout to spark fusion in their cores. The galaxy is littered with these failures, one for every successful star. Stars in the prime of their stellar lives make up 90% of the several hundred billion in the Milky Way. The Sun is one, part of the yellow dwarf category in which only about 7% of stars fall. A relative rarity, far more numerous, are the cooler and smaller red dwarfs that make up a much larger 75%. As we look for stars with larger masses, the search becomes more difficult thanks to their volatility and short lifespan. White supergiants like Canopus, the second brightest star in the sky, despite its great distance from us, comprise less than 1% of the stars in our galaxy, and more extreme hypergiants like the largest known star Stevenson II, 18 are even harder to find, their size resulting in strong stellar winds, where stellar material, the mass of Jupiter, is blown away in single events, almost evaporating the star as fast it grows. While most stars are enjoying their best life, there are tens of billions of stars in the final stages of their stellar evolution. All of the stars we can observe are classified as either Population 1 or Population 2, depending on their age. Population I stars are younger and contain more heavy elements, while Population 2 stars are older with fewer heavy elements. The very first stars, described as Population the Third, are older still, their existence coinciding with cosmic distances that put them well out of sight of even our best technologies. For now, we can only theorize what they might have looked like. Scientists think those earliest stars were super hot, bright and massive, maybe hundreds of times the mass of our sun. Without a history of powerful cosmic events to generate elements heavier than lithium, Population the three stars would consist entirely of the simplest of gases. Back then, the only materials available in the universe were hydrogen, helium, and a little lithium found in primordial gas left over from the Big Bang. Only once the first stars themselves collapsed in heated violence could heavier elements emerge. Those first stars likely concluded their lives with pair instability supernovae, a theoretical type of supersupernova only possible in such massive stars. Unlike other supernovae, this would leave behind no stellar remnants like a neutron star or black hole, instead blasting everything outward in an ever-expanding cloud. Smaller stars, such as the Sun, will eventually puff out into red giants, a fleeting midpoint on the way to a white dwarf. These dense and compact stellar remnants comprise about 5% of stars in the present day, 
though eventually 97% of the Milky Way stellar population will shrivel into these gently fading spheres. Neutron stars and black holes are exotic, high-density phenomena making up 0.5% and 0.0005% of our galaxy's population respectively and the result of supernovae by the largest stars. While spinning neutron stars, pulses, have been observed in their thousands since the 1960s, we have only observed 31 of their most extreme forms. Magnetars, this type of neutron star, has a magnetic field a thousand trillion times stronger than that of the Earth, and starquakes on their surface produce powerful bursts of gamma rays. These starquakes are also much stronger than our equivalent, reaching up to 23 on the Richter scale. But even that is still not the rarest form of star scientists predict could be out there. In its early days, the universe was filled with hypergiants, but they were much different to those we see now. The first lights that kindled in the cosmos were vast, hungry and short-lived, living and dying in a cosmic blink of an eye. Known as Population Three Stars, they were the ancestors of us all, and they may still linger on out there in the black, the rarest star of all. The sun is essential to all life on Earth. Its calm and predictability nurtures plants, animals and humans alike, surrounding them with light and warmth. It is no wonder then that right from when the earliest civilizations formed, the sun has often been portrayed as a benevolent god, one to be feared perhaps, but only because of its possible disappearance. Now, of course, we understand that stars are physical entities, still full of wonder but explainable using modern science. For the longest time, we were reliant only on our own eyes until Galileo ground his artificial lenses and magnified the skies with his telescope. The haze of the Milky Way resolved into millions of stars, and even some individual stars revealed themselves to be binary systems. Hundreds of years passed, and we catalogued the positions of these stars with increasing accuracy. And with the advent of spectroscopy, we could even begin to identify barcodes individual to each star, the gaps in which revealed which heavy elements were present in that stellar atmosphere. We could identify what these distant suns were really made of. The galaxy containing these stars is 13.2 billion light years away, further than we can directly look. But it's visible because its light is being gravitationally lensed by a closer cluster of galaxies. Friends, what are your thoughts about this? Tell us in the comments. And for more similar videos, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. See you in the next amazing video. Until then, thank you for watching this video until the end.